Hello, you squishy, squashy people. This is Carla, and I am here today with an absolutely stunning fall dish that you should definitely consider for your Thanksgiving or harvest table. This is 15 minute roasted squash with spicy greens and yogurt. I don't know about you, but I always crave orange and green foods this time of year. They really go together. There's something super grounding about the sweet squash and the sturdiness of the greens. And then I amp it up with crunch and spice. It is very delicious. And the best part of all is it truly does take 15 minutes. Let me show you how to do it. Big thanks today to Victorinox for sponsoring this episode. Victorinox makes professional grade knives for the home cook and their blades have been part of my personal knife collection for many, many years. Victorinox knives are made in Switzerland and they come with a lifetime guarantee. How could you beat that? When people ask me for advice about knives, I always tell them that the way the knife feels in your hand is just as important as the size or shape. The very first thing that you'll notice about these knives when you pick them up is how comfortable the handles are because they were engineered to be that way and the super sharp, razor sharp blades. To make today's dish, the 15 minute roasted squash spicy greens. I'm going to be using the chef's knife to easily slice these winter squash into rounds and then switching over to the Santoku for trimming the greens and cutting them into really thin ribbons. Please check out the link in the description box to learn more about Victorinox and these knives. And let's get back to the show. This recipe was written with butternut squash. Um, I love using honey nuts, which are in season and easier and easier to get. So that's what I'm using today. You want any hard winter squash. So you could use acorn squash, you could use butternut. There's these new koji nut ones. Then I saw some other new hybrid the other day. The other thing you might notice is that I did not peel these squash. I don't really think you need to, but if you have a squash that feels extra waxy on the outside or you feel like the skin is super thick, then go ahead and peel it. It's really personal preference. And instead of starting and trying to split the squash vertically, I'm just going across because I want to get these nice rounds of squash. I just think that they look cute and it's a little less work. And don't stress, like obviously it's hard to cut a round thing and it's a little bit thicker on one side than the other. It's okay, it'll just mean that this side will get like a little extra caramelized and this side will be a little more steamy and tender. And we like texture and we're human and the squash doesn't care. And so it's all really, it's all good. When I get down to here, you can see in the middle, that's about to be where I'm gonna hit the seeds. So at this point you can keep going round and just scoop them out, which is what I'm gonna do. So it's like no seed on that side, seedy on that side, or let's just do it both ways because it's fun. You could go in half, scoop. So now we have what I consider to be a half moon and then you can put it on a cut side and then still going in half inch and get these shapes. So this will all look really pretty kind of staggered on the platter. So at the beginning of the season when the squash have just been harvested, that's when they're just like ultra sweet, really juicy and fresh. And then things that grow together go together. And this is a perfect example of that in this dish. Now these are cut. My oven is at 500 degrees. I'm gonna season with good drizzles and drazzles of extra virgin olive oil and turn them to coat. One of the things that I really love about this recipe is that the squash are going into a very hot oven. They're going in at a very high temperature and they are never getting turned over. Sometimes you just have to max out the browning on one side because if you try to get really beautiful browning on both sides, you're going to either end up overcooking the squash because they had to be in the oven for longer to get browning on both sides, or you get like a pale golden brown in the shorter amount of time on both sides, and that doesn't have the flavor payoff. So what I'm doing here is just going for really nice caramelization on the side that's on the bottom of the sheet tray, and then they're gonna get really roasty and delicious and tender, and the 15 minute time. Can't be beat, you can't beat it. We have already um, named this technique. It's not gonna be in any of the culinary books that you find, but it's called kill it on the first side. <laughs> and I think it might also relate to like A side, B side. Oh, sorry, I'm talking about records. Records are these things that um, used to exist. They were these weird like saucers and you'd put them on 
a circle machine and then it was it would play music. So the A side would have the most popular, the single, and then on the B side, it would be like, you know, the other song that you should know about. Oh my God, and the squash are tiny little 45s, right? Shout out to all you vinyl heads out there. So not only is the oven hot, but I've got a rack in the bottom position. That's because there's a heat source under there. So it's really gonna encourage browning from the underside of the sheet pan to the bottom side of the squash. So I have here Tuscan kale. You can use any type of kale, red Russian kale. You could use curly kale. Any sturdy leafy green is gonna be really beautiful for this dish. And the first thing I did was just pull the leaves off. I don't even need a knife for this just yet, but I'm literally just unzipping and you're gonna end up with this kind of V-shaped leaf situation. So at this point, I'm gonna stack and slice into ribbons. So I'll take like three or four of a similar size. Going crosswise, I'm gonna cut in approximately quarter inch ribbons. And I like to use more of a slicing motion when I do this for ribbons rather than a rocking or chopping because the more times you go over the greens, the more likely you are to bruise them and then oxidize them. So just like one nice cut to get these thin little strips. The reason I'm cutting them thinly is because they're really not gonna get cooked later. They're just gonna get like a hot oil bath. So now that this is ribboned and floofed, it's gonna get some vinegar. I'm using unseasoned rice vinegar. You can use any vinegar you've got on the caddy, champagne vinegar, cider vinegar, white vinegar, and looking for about a tablespoon. So this is a little bit like dressing greens with lemons before adding olive oil. You want the acidic ingredient to be close to the greens from the beginning so that it's getting close and it's actually seasoning. The other thing that the vinegar is doing here is getting the leaves kind of wet so that when the hot oil hits them, there's going to be this nice reaction of sizzling and steaming and crackling and bursting is part of what's gonna help them wilt. Is that the timer? I think my timer just went off. In the time that it took for my squash to roast, I had just the right window of time to get the kale ready and that's just the most efficient use of your time in the kitchen. I can tell just by looking down from the top that I've got browning on the underneath. Like you can definitely see it on some of these smaller pieces. So if you, again, were going back to a day that people were gonna come over for dinner, you could roast the squash and let it cool, kind of turn them, make sure they're not gonna stick to the pan, let them cool, and then warm them up in a low oven for 10 minutes later before putting the dish together. The last step is to make this spicy sizzle. So I'm gonna start in a cold pan with my spices and oil and gradually bring everything up. That gives me more control. That's gonna prevent browning and it's gonna really nicely infuse the oil. This is also extremely customizable. So I've just added sunflower seeds. I've got mustard seeds. You could use any color mustard seeds. I have sesame seeds that you could use golden or black ones. But honestly, you could use chopped almonds instead of the sunflower seeds. You could use cashews. You could use walnuts. You could use spices that you like from the drawer. It's like really anything goes with this. So once those are in this cold pan, I'm adding olive oil. It's a third of a cup, which perhaps sounds like enough to you. And if so, <laughs> this is probably the first time you're watching our channel. <laughs> Cause it's not, it's not a lot. And we love fat and olive oil is great. And it's gonna dress, you know, this entire huge thing of kale. So now that these guys are combined, I'm going over medium high heat. So this is not a set it and forget it kind of a moment. You've got very volatile seeds. You've got oil heating up. You wanna be standing here, stirring, watching, listening for things to turn golden brown, to start to pop. And it's only gonna take two to three minutes. So it's kind of cool to watch everything transform. Just hang out and enjoy, enjoy the show. Now I've got sizzling and that's because 
Not that the oil is boiling, it's the, any moisture that's inside of the seeds is now getting up to a temperature where it's starting to steam and sizzle. So what you're seeing is the reaction of that moisture and the oil being in contact. Okay, so this is very, very hot. Take care. Don't be fooled by its beautiful golden brown gorgeousness. I'm sprinkling in the chili seed now and they also are gonna sizzle as soon as they hit the oil. Give those a little shake. You could use salad tossers. I have a pair of tongs and just gonna pouring that over. You hear the sizzle. I'm just tossing that top layer definitely got razzle dazzled. You don't have to pour it this way unless you have a camera person standing right there, just FYI. <laughs> and now I have a salad. I have like a warm kale, seedy, delicious, vinegary, olive oily infused salad. Great side dish. Mmm. Wow, I took a bite like it was the food, not a taster. It's really good. It needs salt. Sizzling greens is one of those show off -y moments that you could just be like, oh, casually, I'm just gonna finish the greens and then just make like a magic show basically happen in the bowl. People might like that. Gather around, everybody. <laughs> it's time to yogurt our platter. I'm using Greek yogurt, and this is some measured amount that's gonna appear on the screen. And then I'm just using the back of the spoon to swoosh. In the book, sometimes when I cook my old recipes, I, I have questions for my former self that don't always get answered. I didn't season the yogurt in the original recipe. I think I did it because like there was so much seasoning going on, but like why? You know what I mean? It just seems right now to season the yogurt. So I'm putting the yogurt on the bottom of the platter, really just there so that when you're scooping up from the bottom, you'll get a little bit of yogurt swoosh. And all of these flavors, you've got like this tangy and creamy, you have caramelized and sweet things going on. The kale has those bitter notes, it's got the spice, it's got the vinegar, so it's really like everything. I'm gonna top it off with my seedy greens. Look, I think it's gorgeous. And I think my wardrobe choice, you, fi you finally now see what was, like, what was going on, right? All right, so this recipe goes out to all of my sturdy bottom, green and leafy people. I see you, and when someone says you're seedy, I see it as a good thing. So don't let anyone tell you you're a seedy character and you could just be like, oh yeah, am I a spicy seedy drizzle? Mmm, right back at ya. I'm also gonna prove to you that squash skin can be delicious and nutritious. You eat the skin of an apple, come on. Mmm, it's very sassy. It's delicious. This is just a delicious thing that you should eat. Before we go, I do wanna say thank you so much to Victorinox again, which made it beautiful, pleasing, and successful for me to cut these gorgeous vegetables into gorgeous shapes.